Hey Sam, thanks for joining us today. My question is about recruiting. I just want your thoughts on what Coach Brown and the staff have done, especially in with the in-state recruiting. Uh, what's what's your thoughts on keeping the the best in North Carolina in North Carolina? Yeah, I think that's Sam, really Sam, before you dive into that, let me just reiterate that Sam can't speak about anybody in particular. I understand that. Yeah, um, you know, when Coach Brown first came here, he, he made it a goal that he wanted to establish dominance in the state as far as recruiting goes. And uh, our coaching staff worked so hard recruiting, and they've done a really good job. I think for us to have a really good program, we need to get the best kids in the state. You know, there's some really good players in the state of North Carolina. Um, so, I mean, just to establish that type of dominance in recruiting has been really good for us, and, and it'll keep going in the future. All right, we're going to Andrew. Jones here. Hey, Sam, I appreciate your time very much, and I hope that uh, you and your family are well as well. Uh, my question is about Coach Longo said the other day that you guys are in constant communication, and among the things that you've discussed, there's, there is a film that they made of the, the mistakes you made last season, from the small ones to the big ones. How has that communication process been for you during the shutdown? And as far as fixing some of those things, how much can you actually fix during the shutdown when there's a lot, so many limitations? Um, yeah, me, me and Coach Longo, we, we, we have a meeting probably every single day. I know, like you said, with the cut up of the mistakes from last season, um, it's mainly it's all mental. I mean, you know, and during this time, that's something I can really focus on, uh, you know, just being in the house so much. I can really just sit down and focus on every single mistake that I made last season and just try to figure out what I did wrong. I mean, I know what I did wrong now at this point, and I know what I need to do to fix it. So main, mainly it's all mental. Uh, that's kind of something that I've really been trying to get better at during this time and just make sure I'm mentally 100% right. Andrew, anything to follow up with? Uh, well, is, how much work are you – physical work are you able to do right now? Um, yeah, I'm throwing outside twice a week. Uh, you know, I have a quarterback trainer, so me and him to get together in a small group. And uh, we, we get together twice a week, and I throw a really good amount. Uh, you know, I meet up with Deami sometimes, just me and him. We throw some routes uh, just with him being so close here in Charlotte. So I'm definitely making sure I'm getting the throws I need to get in. Trying to find Luke DeCock. Luke, right. you got me. Um, Go ahead. Sam, one, one of the other things that, that Phil said on Monday was that you guys were watching a lot of NFL defensive film and kind of running your offense against it, um, mentally speaking. What, what, what's that been like for you, and kind of what, what have you learned uh, doing that? Yeah, it's been a little different. Uh, you know, I haven't really studied a whole lot of NFL for myself just on the defense side of the ball. So um, it's definitely something that's been very good for me as far as my development. You know, my final goal is to end up playing in the NFL one day. So, Coach Long is going to do everything he can. His power to help me get there. So, this has been really good as far as just helping my understanding of understanding defenses. You know, in the NFL, they do a lot of different stuff, um, a lot more complex than what they do in college. So, he's, he's just trying to get me prepared for all that. Anything to follow up, Luke? Yeah, and, and just kind of, is there anything specific that you've learned kind of doing those exercises that you can apply – you know, to, to, to what you're doing now? Uh, honestly, I would say the main thing I learned is just, like, like how, like, how much they change stuff, like, from snap to snap. And then, but like, it's not always the same thing. I just see a lot of repetitive coverages, things like that. Like, teams really stick to what they do. Like, in the NFL, like, teams do everything. Like, teams run all, the, all different types of coverage. They're, they have every single coverage in their playbook. So, it's just, like, the speed of the game is, uh, just it's a lot more complex from the defense side. Go ahead. Hey, uh, Sam, excuse my hair. I need a haircut. But, uh, um, you know, for you, with the shutdown and – the prospect of not being maybe on campus till July. How much of a concern is it knowing you can only do so much mental and you can't work with your receivers, you know, and get the time and stuff down that you guys would need to get down to play? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely it's definitely different for us. Uh, you know, I definitely wish I was with my team working right now, but 
we have a really good group of guys, and I know that everyone's going to do whatever it takes for us to be successful when it comes time of the fall. So I'm really not worried about everyone being behind when we get back to school because I know that my guys are going to do whatever it takes to get themselves prepared. Go ahead, Bill. And, and then a quick follow-up, and it, it kind of builds off that NFL. Um, for you, as you continue your development to get towards the league, does the prospect of maybe losing a year of not playing, I mean, how devastating would that be for a quarterback like yourself who will probably get talked about pretty highly here in a few seasons? Um, yeah, you're talking about if we don't play this season? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm just trying to stay positive. Uh, you know, I'm just going to prepare. That's not in my control. All I can control is how I prepare and just how I get myself ready to play if we do play this fall. So I'm just trying to focus on myself and make sure I'm doing everything I can to be prepared if we do have a season. Dennis Dodd, sports, you're up. Hey, Sam, two quick ones. Uh, who's your throwing coach and how long have you been with him? Uh, yeah, I started with Anthony Boone. Uh, he played at Duke a couple years back. Yep. Uh, yeah, I've been throwing him since done with him since my freshman year of high school. Okay, and I, I assume you're just getting out on a field somewhere and and getting to work in. Yeah, we do we do a, we do a lot of stuff, a lot of mobility stuff, a lot of different type of stuff. Uh, he does a really really good job of making sure he's tuning up all parts of my game, whether it's my feet, uh, whether it's my eyes, all different types of game. And, and also, um, you know, there was a time not too long ago you you don't remember this where guys didn't really assemble at all in the off season. They came to fall camp and, and did conditioning drills to get ready. Could this, what you got, what you as college football are going through, could that be some sort of template for college football, not being an 11 or 12 month a year sport? Uh, I, I don't, I personally don't think so. I, I like the way that we do it now. Uh, you know, I, I think the guys that are playing college football love the game. They really want to do it every single day. So. I, I don't see a tangent in the near future. Okay, thanks. Greg Barnes, you're up. Sam, along the lines of talking about Anthony, one one thing we talked about a lot last year was how you were um, kind of restricted in your ability to run and just because of the injury situation. Anthony, I know, ran for – Close to a thousand yards, <clears throat> much touchdowns in his Duke career. Has he helped you with that dynamic and 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 making sure you're athletically in the way the shape you need to be in for for running? I know Hess does a lot of that, but in terms of the thinking component of, it cut out for a minute. Can you repeat just the last part? Sorry, Greg. Can you hear us? You cut out there a little bit at the end. Greg, see if you can get your audio fixed and we'll come back to you. Jonathan Alexander, go ahead. Peace. I'm audio. Questions for you. Um, you know, I think we spoke to Mac Brown a couple weeks ago. He mentioned that you were one of the players leading player led practices. Um, what all have players been doing together? And then I'll ask the second question after you you know, answer the first. Yeah, you know, uh, we, we get on Zoom with Coach Hess, and, you know, he goes through our workout plan, and he's – we're not allowed to work out on Zoom. Uh, the NCAA is not allowing that. So, uh, we can get on there and we can watch Coach Hess. He demos all the workouts, so all our guys get on there, and we see the demo, and then we do our workout. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm just in constant communication with the guys, making sure everyone's doing what they're supposed to be doing. And our, our guys have responded really, really well during this hard time. So, I'm definitely excited about where we're going. And then my second question is, you know, a lot of, you know, with what's been happening, a lot of guys, specifically the guys who come in early in January and get that work in, aren't able to come in early. Um, how was that beneficial? Yeah, it definitely was a big part. Uh, not a football team, just life. Um, but definitely just going through those 15 practices in spring ball was really big for me. Uh, you know, I'm disappointed we didn't we didn't get to see uh, what those new guys could do. But I know they'll be they'll be ready to go when it comes time to the fall. Thank you, Greg. Coming back to you. Can we hear you? Yeah, can you hear me? 
No, all good. Uh, Sam was just asking about with Anthony Boone, uh, threw for a lot of yards at Duke, but he also ran for a lot of yards. Uh, I know the running game is a bigger part for you moving forward. You couldn't do it last year because of injuries. Has he helped you kind of with the mindset of, of when to scramble, how to scramble, and how do you expect that to, to help your, your progress in the years to come? Yeah, I mean, he's done a little bit. But honestly, mostly that aspect of my game is just I need to get – I need to work on my mobility. And, you know, all that's kind of with Coach S. Uh, you know, he's a lot of different different things that uh, I can do to help me with that, uh, different different type of stretches, different type of movements. But, uh, I mean, I'm just trying to work at that every single day because I think that's definitely an aspect of my game that can take my game to the next level. Um, but, yeah, Anthony Boone does help me as far as, like, on the mental side of when to do this, when to do that. Anything further, Greg? No, that's got it. Thank you. All right, Greg, where are you? Sam, you mentioned working out with Diami occasionally. I'm just curious, how helpful is it for you knowing that you have him back, Daz back, Bo, uh, even Antoine Green? I mean, you have your entire receiving core coming back, and then you have additions uh, like Josh Downs. How helpful is that for you? considering what we're all going through right now. Yeah, it's definitely kind of like a sign of relief. Uh, just knowing to have, what, 10 starters back on offense. So, I mean, it's definitely – it's definitely you don't you definitely don't want to be going through this time not knowing who's going to play where. Uh, so, I mean, it's definitely good that we're having everybody back and just – we can just build on what we did last year. Uh, you know, during this time, there's not really a whole lot of learning that needs to be done. It's more just making sure everyone's getting their body prepared and just making sure we're ready to go full speed when it comes time to fall. Go ahead, Gregor. And then what, uh, I guess, are you expecting out of them uh, in year two uh, with your receiving core? Uh, you know, I expect a lot. Uh, they're all really, really good players. So I expect them all to just take their, make their game 1% better and make sure they try to get to the next level of each of their games. Uh, you know, they're all really good players. They're all really different receivers. So they all have different little things that they can work on. Uh, but I know they're working as hard as they can. You know, Coach Galloway does a really good job with those guys of letting them know what they need to work on and they, and they get it done. So I'm definitely excited for those guys. It'll be a really, really big year for them. Charlie and Mark, you guys are up. Uh, I've got a question actually for both of you, kind of one for you too, Jeremy. Sam, do you have the mindset that you are a legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate potentially this year? And, and Jeremy, is that a campaign that you guys are already starting to craft if the season comes through? Um, when it comes to me, I personally, I mean, it's always been a goal of mine to win the Heisman Trophy, but really I'm just worried about my team. And I know that if I play, if I do what I'm supposed to do, my team has a really good season. For me. But really I'm just trying to go out there and give my team everything I can, make sure we're winning games. It's kind of, it's, I think it, in my opinion, it's selfish of me to just go into the season with one goal to win the Heisman Trophy. So I'm just focused on trying to make sure I'm doing everything I can and help my, my team win games. I don't do interviews. <laughs> no, seriously, um, for, for us, the philosophy has always been um, to, to undersell and let the players kind of handle their business. So we do things like this. We'll keep people informed both locally and around the country of the, the accolades that a particular player is reaching. Um, we find that, that universities and institutions – pushing a, a narrative about a player tend to set that, that player up to times can be detrimental. Um, we allow a season to play out and utilize the, the facts of what's occurring to determine it. And you guys have heard Sam say before, all he cares about is winning. So it, it's my job to let him go play. And then if he plays like he did last year with the numbers that he put up and we win a bunch of ball games, I'll be in contact with everybody around the country and our program will do that and support our guys for any of the awards that, that they may be candidates for. That's always been our philosophy. We're not big on the, the overall campaigns that you may have seen around the country. Um, we kind of use more of a grassroots approach and allow folks in the media or voters to be the ones talking about the players and we provide the information necessary. Good. Uh, JB, where are you at? Are. 
Fiddling. Mike. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, JB. All right. Hey, Sam, thanks so much for taking out time for us, man. We really appreciate it. regards to, to what's going on right now with this COVID, how will you apply the, this experience and the adversity that you're going through right when you do get back on the field, whether it be this fall or 2021? Yeah, definitely what we're going through is, is different for all of us. Uh, you know, it's been hard, you know, just going away from what was normal. Uh, you know, we all want to be back together, working out together. But I think the main thing for us uh, is just making sure we're taking advantage of the time that we have right now, uh, you know, you can't, we can't, like, we can't look at it on the negative side. Uh, you know, we just got to make sure we keep working because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we, we have a season to play in fall. That's, that's the mindset we have. Uh, you know, we, we just got to control what we can control and make sure that we're doing everything we can to be prepared when the time comes. All right. Thanks, man. Yep. Fleet, go ahead. Hey, Sam. Thanks for making time. Um, a little more lighthearted, uh, in regards to last week's uh, April Fool's post about the uh, Carolina Blue Turf, uh, Mac Brown said that there was kind of an interesting reaction amongst the players. Some people really liked it, some didn't. Uh, what were your thoughts on that, um, the thought on playing on Carolina Blue Turf, that he said he, he might look into it in the future? Uh, me, personally, I wasn't, I, I wasn't really a big fan of it. I'm more of a type, kind of traditional guy. I like the green field, just have that different type of feeling, you know. But, yeah, I mean, it was definitely a cool aspect, uh, you know. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be like, I wouldn't be mad if they got that in the near future, but I, I personally prefer having a green field. Andrew, how'd you sneak back in there in front of all these people? The what now? How'd you sneak back in in front of all these people? I don't know. I clicked, I raised my hand. If you want to go to some other people right now, come back to me later, that's fine. Now nah, go ahead. I'm just going in order. We'll get okay. there. Well, I had, I had a follow-up question what Dean asked about recruiting for Sam. Uh, Mac has often said he wants to make Carolina the cool place to be. Now that he, Sam has been in the program for more than a year and he's seen a lot of kids come in, what elements of the cool place to be uh, does he think – do you think appeal to the recruits the most? Um, yeah, when, I mean, to recruits, you know, they care about – every recruit kind of cares about different types of things. I mean, some of them really care about the facility. Some of them um, really, like, really just care about the game day atmosphere, just things like that. I mean, Coach Brown's done a really good job making sure he's tuned up every single part of our program, uh, whether it's the family atmosphere we have inside the building, whether it's all the brand new facilities, uh, like they just finished one the other day. Um, you know, the game day atmosphere has been unbelievable, too. So when kids come to the games, they just fall in love with the, fan, fa the fans, the atmosphere that we have. You know, everyone, everyone dreams of playing in a big college atmosphere, and we've we've developed one in North Carolina right now. So we just got to make sure we're making sure we're staying on top of every single part of our uh, program because a lot of things that recruits tend to do is just like if they see one one bad thing about school, then their school's out. So Coach Brown's done a really good job making sure that every single aspect of our program has been top notch. Ross Martin, go ahead. Hey, Sam. My question is a little bit similar to, to Mark's. Do you see that stuff? Is it cool to see? Is it good to see? And how you kind of, I guess, handling expectations with a lot more tension on UNC football heading into 2020? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely cool to see. Uh, you know, it's, we, we definitely have a lot of excitement around our program right now. But we just got to make sure we're looking at it the right way. You know, I, we constantly tell our guys, man, like, just because it's supposed to happen does not mean it's going to happen. Uh, you know, we still have to put in the work every single day, and we still actually have to do it. Just so we're supposed to win, what, like, 10 games, it doesn't mean we're just going to go out there and win 10 games. So we just got to make sure we're looking at the positive side and not trying to get um, overconfident going into the season. Because we know that we still have a lot of work to do to get where we want to be. I share with the injury problems with Jet to Jace. Are you looking forward to possibly uh, opening up the playbook a little bit more with uh, Coach Longo in the running game? Yeah, definitely. That's definitely something that's exciting to me. Uh, you know, I, I ran the ball a lot in high school. 
and I enjoy running the ball. I think it's an aspect where I can, it's an aspect of my game where I can help this team a little more. Uh, so I'm definitely excited. You know, we right now we have great depth <clears throat> in our quarterback room. Sorry. But, um, yeah, even Jacoby has come along really well. Uh, he's a very smart kid and he's very talented. So I'm definitely glad to have Jason and Jacoby in our room. Uh, and yeah, we have a lot of depth and we have one of the best quarterback rooms in the country right now. <clears throat> Grace Rayner, go ahead. Hey, Sam. Um, speaking of your mobility, kind of piggybacking off of that, I'm just curious what else is towards the top of your own personal off-season to-do list? Oh, uh, yeah. Other than mobility, main thing that I had circle coming into the off-season so much better. I can get so much better mentally. Uh, so, you know, I'm just trying to watch as much film as I can, just making sure I'm as sharp as possible. But there's still so much more I can learn about defenses, even even my own game. So I'm just trying to make sure I'm as, as good as I can be when it comes season time. Anything else, Grace? I'm good. Thank you. Going back to Charlie and Mark. Uh, what would you say, Sam, you miss most about not being around your teammates right now? Uh, just to, just being around them, like you said, just being around them. Uh, I have a lot of really good relationships with my teammates. Uh, you know, I see them as brothers, so I just miss being around them every single day. I miss seeing all their faces every single day. Uh, just the times we spend in the locker room working out together. We just have a really good time doing what we do. So, yeah, I definitely miss it. I wake up and I miss it every single day. What's Mark? I was going to ask one more um, related to Anthony Boone again. He was obviously coached up by David Cutcliffe. Are you indirectly getting quarterback coaching from David Cutcliffe, an arch rival coach? I wouldn't go that far, but that's an interesting way to look at it. <clears throat> I mean, Anthony, Anthony, Anthony does a really, really good job. He's had, uh, they've done me, and uh, he's just—he's a really good job. He, he does a really good job with me and with all the kids that he trains. So. He's definitely, he, he's definitely going to have a long career doing what he does as far as training quarterbacks go. So I'm definitely very lucky to have him here. Gregory Hall. Sam, I'm just curious, with big non-conference uh, opponents early, UCF and Auburn, how much you been – I wouldn't probably come until fall – can't be kind of much. Um, you know, I have, I have all the cut-ups for those first two games. Uh, so, yeah, I definitely put some time into it. Anything more, Gregory? No, that's all. <clears throat> Where are you at, Aaron? Aaron Beard, go ahead. Hey, Sam. Uh, you mentioned the workouts you guys are doing and, and trying to make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to do to be prepared. Uh, I'm curious how nutrition and eating right kind of comes into that equation too, because it's not the same as being on campus and eating at you know, the training table with the nutritionist right there. Uh, how much do you guys talk about that? And is it difficult or trickier to kind of stick to what you should be doing when you're not on campus? Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely a challenge. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're just used to going in there every single day and having all the nutritionists there telling us what to eat and telling us what not to eat and what not. So it's definitely a challenge for all of us. Uh, you know, we're, we're in constant communication with our nutritionists. Uh, Kelsey, our nutritionist and her staff do a really good job making sure we need everything that we need and just trying to make sure we all have a plan and we all know what our plan is, whether that's to gain weight, lose weight. So it's definitely a challenge because we don't really have like someone telling us every single day what, what we're supposed to eat. But, you know, I think our guys, I kind of, like we spend a lot of time talking about how important nutrition is to our body and like how much like it can affect us on the field. So I think our guys are really taking that into account and they're really trying to Make sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing in that in that aspect. Anything further, Aaron? Yeah, just to follow up for you personally, is it like more difficult in terms of I don't know, like going to the grocery store, things being out uh, at the stores, or you know, it takes more effort to prepare something the way it would have been done on campus the right way, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely different, but uh, this might this might sound kind of crazy, but I kind of enjoyed a little bit. Just going to the grocery store shopping because it kind of makes me feel grown up. Uh, but, yeah, I, I'm kind of enjoying it. 
I, you know, I've, I have a little bit of time on my hands, so I enjoy going to the grocery store shopping and trying to get everything I need. But You good, Aaron? Good. Back to Bill Bender. Hear, hear me? Yeah, I'm good. Am I, uh, I'm off mute. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm a novice at this, Jeremy. Um, so, You're a novice at most things, Bill. Thank you. Uh, Sam, like most of us, I mean, we think we're going to watch the NFL draft. How much are you going to pay attention to that? And, uh, you know, there are a lot of quarterbacks going in the first round. How much have you studied uh, a Joe Burrow or a Tua, some of those guys that will probably go in the top ten? Uh, yeah, so I study I studied Joe Burrow too a lot actually. Uh, right right when our season ended, first thing I did was make sure that I was sent all the LSU games from last season, uh, just because Joe Burrow did a really really good job and he was just so efficient. So I just want to make I've, I've probably watched every single one of his games probably three times since the season's been over. So he's he's definitely a really really good player. And back to your NFL draft question, I definitely pay close attention to it just because. That's my goal to be there one day. And I, I've, I've watched every single NFL draft as far as I can remember. So it's de I'll definitely, even no matter, I don't really know the form that's going to be in this year, but I'm definitely going to be tuned in, whatever it is. Anything further, Bill? Yeah. Um, with Burrow in particular, a guy that, you know, he, he has a skill set, you know, not all that different than yours, I'd say. He's a pretty mobile quarterback as well. You know, when you watch those games with him, Aside from the efficiency, what's something that you could bring into your game that, that he has shown? And, and let's be honest, he'll probably be the number one pick anyway. Yeah, I think what he does a really good job of is just staying calm in the pocket. Uh, you know, nothing really rattles him, whether he's forced to escape on his feet. He's always, he always, he's always just calm, and he's always looking downfield trying to extend the play. So he, just does, he just does a really good job of delivering the football to his guys. He just does it in a very efficient way. And the main thing with him is he doesn't make mistakes. Uh, he's not going to put his team in a bad position. He, he doesn't turn the ball over, really. So just trying to be as efficient and just trying to make sure that I try to stay as calm as possible back there in the pocket. Thank you. Ross Martin, go ahead. Yeah, Sam, uh, you know, you were freshman last year, and, and Brian has said that you've become more of a leader in the workouts this season. What steps are you taking to be more of a leader? And um, does it come naturally, or is it something you have to kind of make an intention to, to, to be more of a leader this year heading to 2020? I think it's a little bit of both. I think part of it comes naturally, but another part of it is me just having to put more of an emphasis on leadership. Uh, and I think I'm in a position, position now where a lot of guys on the team are looking at me uh, so, I mean, right now during this time, as far as leadership goes, honestly, the main thing is just communication, making sure I'm communicating with the guys and make sure everyone's staying on top of their stuff. And they've done a really, really good job of that. So I'm definitely blessed to have the guys that I have because they're doing a really, really good job with handling their stuff right now. Go ahead, Ross. Yeah, and, and kind of along those lines, what can you tell us about Jacoby Criswell and what kind of steps you've taken working with him? Because you, you were with him for about three months before things shut down. Uh, um, off-season conditions. Yeah, Kobe's a really, really good player. I know we got we we threw some and like some player led stuff in the spring. Uh, and he, he he's he's done a really, really good job. I mean, he's he's definitely he definitely he's eager to learn about the playbook. He's eager to learn about defenses, all that type of stuff. So, um, yeah, he's he's always wanting to learn. He's always asking questions. So, I'm really excited about where he's going to be.